वेलकम बैक टू द क्लास एंड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डन ग्लाइकोलाइसिस वी हैव सीन द वेरियस स्टेप्स ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस हाउ वन मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ ग्लूकोज फॉर्म टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ प्राइमरिक एसिड सो इन आर टुडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द नेक्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ एरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन व्हिच आर क्रैप साइकिल एंड ईटीएस सो इन टुडेज लेक्चर वी कॉम्प्रिहेंड द वेरियस स्टेप्स साइक्लिक पाथवे ऑफ द क्रैप साइकिल सो डीलिंग स्टार्टिंग विथ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस We have seen glycolysis that one molecule of glucose gets split to form the two molecules of pyruvic acid. It occurs in the cytoplasm. Now this is a cell. A eukaryotic cell will contain all the cell organelles and it also contains the mitochondria. The glycolysis occur in the cytosol and what is the formation? Two molecules of pyruvic acid. so pyruvic acid before entering into the matrix of mitochondria has to convert into a two carbon containing compound which is called as the acetyl coenzyme a now let us see how it occurs and why this molecule is called as the connecting link between the glycolysis and the krebs cycle so in aerobic respiration what will happen after the formation of pyruvic acid in glycolysis this pyruvic acid will liberate a co2 so three carbon will form a two carbon this two carbon acetate molecule will be then accepted by the coenzyme a a sulfur containing molecule acetate plus coenzyme a will form acetyl coenzyme a and during this process one nad will get converts into the nadh2 so this is the step where a decarboxylation and oxidation occur simultaneously and it is carried out by the enzyme which is called as pyruvate dehydrogenase and this is the linking step between the glycolysis and krebs cycle acetyl coenzyme a that's why regarded as a linking molecule between the glycolysis and krebs cycle one molecule of pyruvic acid how many carbon 3 acetate 2 what is liberated one co2 and what is why which is accepted by coenzyme a to form the acetyl coenzyme a with the production of nadh2 now let us see the various cyclic steps which occur in the krebs cycle what is present in the matrix of mitochondria a four carbon containing compound which is called as oxaloacetic acid it will combine with this two carbon acetyl coenzyme so two carbon plus four two plus four is six carbon so there is a formation of a six carbon compound which is called as citric acid synthesis so the name of the enzyme is citrate synthetase the first stable molecule of krebs cycle is citric acid which is a 3 cooh carboxylic group containing compound that's why the krebs cycle is also called as tricarboxylic acid the first stable compound is citric acid that's why the name of the cycle is citric acid cycle and it was elucidated by hans krebs that's why the name of the cycle is krebs cycle three names of the same cycle and where it occurs it occurs in the matrix of mitochondria this citric acid then forms the isomer that is called as the cis aconitic acid again undergo an isomerization to form the isocitric acid these two steps are carried out by the same enzyme which is called as aconitase moving forward this again form a six carbon compound which is called as the oxalosuccinic acid and a two hydrogen ion is liberated oxalosuccinic acid six carbon compound undergo a dehydrogenation 
with decarboxylation. So CO2 is given out. 6 carbon will form the 5 carbon compound which is called as the alpha keto glutaric acid. Beginning with 2 plus 4. 6 comes here. 6 with the release of 2 hydrogen. 1 CO2 liberated to form the alpha keto glutaric acid. This is 5 carbon. Now again a liberation of CO2 molecule will occur. So 5 carbon will form the 4 carbon. The 4 carbon compound form thus is called as the succinyl coenzyme A. The succinyl coenzyme A will form the succinic acid. Again a liberation of 2 hydrogen ion occurs here. Now succinic acid will undergo isomerization to form the fumaric acid. This fumaric acid will give rise to again isomerization to form the malic acid. And there comes a regeneration step where an oxaloacetic acid is recovered back. So here too, here also two hydrogen are liberated and here also two hydrogen are liberated. Now see where is NADH2 is forming. The first NADH2 was formed over here. Decarboxylation, dehydrogenation step. The next molecule of NADH2 is produced here. 1, 2. Okay. This 2 hydrogen is accepted by GDP to form this GTP. And this 2 hydrogen is utilized to form FADH2. And here also in NADH2. When a CO2 is liberated, 2 hydrogen ion is also liberated which is utilized by NAD to form NADH2. So how many NADH2 are formed? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 4. So from one molecule of pyruvic acid, there is a net formation of 4 NADH2 molecule. How many FADH2 are formed? Here in 1 FADH2 is formed, 1 FADH2. How many GTP molecule which is equivalent to ATP? One GTP is liberated. And from pyruvic acid, how many CO2 are liberated? One is over here. One, two and three. Complete oxidation is in the aerobic two. And how many water molecules are utilized? Two water molecules are utilized. So, what is important in Krebs cycle? It is a cyclic pathway. It occurs in the matrix of mitochondria. It is named citric acid because the first stable compound is citric acid. And there is a net gain of 4 NADH2, 1 FADH2 and 1 GTP with a release of 3 molecules of CO2. And in the next step that is in the ETS which occurs in the inner membrane of mitochondria. We will see how 1 NADH2 form 3 ATP. How 1 FADH2 form 2 ATP. How 1 GTP is equivalent to 1 ATP. So for each molecule of glucose this has to undergo 2 times. Because at one time 1 acetyl coenzyme is added. So it will be repeated twice. So from 1 glucose into 2 4 2 is 8. 1 into 2 2 FADH2. 1 into 2 2 GTP. And 3 into 2. 6 CO2 from one molecule of glucose. Okay. In the next lecture we will see how in oxidative phosphorylation the formation of ATP molecule occur. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.